In this video, I'm interviewing Starkey Hearing Technologies Chief Technology Officer and Executive Vice President of Engineering, Achen Bomek, so you can get an inside look at just how techy the hearing aid industry really is. Coming up. Hi guys, Dr. Cliff here. I actually have the Chief Technology Officer from Starkey here, Achen Bomek. Thank you, Dr. Bomek, for taking time to speak with me today. Uh, basically, I want to really know if it's more fun working at Starkey or if it was more fun working at Intel. Okay, so first it's great to meet you, Dr. Cliff Olson. <laughs> really like your video and the energy that I appreciate you bring that. to our community. Back to that question, I think uh, so I spent 17 years at Intel and the last part of that job was uh, a role, leadership role of perceptual computing. So I was vice president of perceptual computing at Intel, which is uh, the domain of uh, sensing and artificial intelligence. Okay. The whole idea was to build technologies that enable computers and machines uh -huh. to be smart. And so we're not talking about like our laptops that we're working with. We're talking As about well. things way beyond that too. So think of whole host of devices, even your lap, your mobile phones and laptops. Why do you need to put in a password to log in? You should be able to just look at the device and it recognizes. I completely agree. Also, right? Yes. <laughs> so it required ad advances in AI to recognize you. But then extend this discussion further. Smart cameras, cameras that should know the occupants of the home. So if somebody breaks in who's not welcome, it should alert you. Uh, I don't recognize somebody who's at home. Uh -huh. right? So smart cameras, robots and drones that would navigate by themselves to cars that would drive by themselves. So that was the domain that I was working on. Right. So Sensors and artificial intelligence. So like technology that eventually becomes smarter than us and eventually takes us all down. And it's all, yeah. so it's helping us today. Uh -huh. It stays that way. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for Intel, if you look at Intel traditionally was a company focused on providing processors for uh, PCs and then server, servers in the data centers. Uh -huh. I was talking about that way. Okay. But my focus was on, well, can we evolve this processor technology along with sensors and machine learning to bring about this new array of smarter and more intelligent machines. Right, and, and I think that that translates really well to your role now at Starkey. I mean, I don't think it's any secret that Starkey has really tried to push this, let's use artificial intelligence inside of the hearing technology, and then do things more than just focus on hearing. So when, how long have you been with Starkey now? So I joined in the summer of uh, 2017. So it's been more than two and a half years now. And that exactly that is exactly why I came to Starkey. In fact, I have to tell you honestly, when I got contacted by Starkey's recruiters, it was a plain and simple no. I'm not interested. Really? I mean, why would I? You didn't even I entertain was, it at I all. Was, I was having a lot of fun at yeah. Intel. It's one of the best companies on the planet. I was having a lot of fun. A lot of good friends uh, there. And my team, I was leading a team of more than 1,400 people around the world, developing breakthrough technologies. I had no reason to look around for jobs or you know, go look. Uh, my friends would rotate around and there would few viewers at Intel, then Apple, Google, Facebook. I spent 17 years there, and when this opportunity came about, and I spent two months interacting uh, with uh, mm -hmm. Starkey executives to understand the opportunity, most important, conversations with Mr. Uh, Bill Austin. Oh, okay, yeah. And it turns out, it's a long story, so I need to cut it short, but uh, it turns out I knew about his work way back in my graduate school. No kidding. Uh, so that was 17 years before I got this call from the recruiter, when I wrote a little white paper comparing and contrasting uh, public companies from private companies, uh -huh. particularly passionate founders who start those companies and some decide to go public and some stay pub private. Right. So I picked two companies that were public, went public, Intel uh -huh. and Microsoft. Okay. And on the private front, it was Bose. I, I was a big uh -huh. fan of Professor Amar Bose and Bill Austin. Right? No kidding. And, but then I had nothing to do with Mr. Austin until I got this call and after saying no, uh -huh. that evening as I was drive, driving back home, I thought, Starkey, mm, is that Mr. Austin's company? Really? I called back the recruiter and asked him, is this Bill Austin Starkey? And he said, yeah, would you like to talk to him? So that's how the no conversation kidding. started. And when I came visited, this was not a formal interview. This was a discussion and a dialogue uh -huh. between the two of us. And he was saying, explain to me what you're doing with AI. And then he said, I'm going to tell you about my work. Uh -huh. At the end, he said, I can create a playground for you right. where you are working on same technologies, but instead of making smart machines, you are right. helping people live better lives. Right. right. So I didn't know I had it in me. 
I, it, uh, you know, I, I was, right. it, it created an emotional appeal for me. Right, well you've been a busy guy then if it's only been a couple of years since you've been with Starkey because you guys just announced, I mean, a, a year ago, you know, the Livio AI came out, mm -hmm. uh, which was groundbreaking technology incorporating motion sensors into the hearing aids right. to accomplish things more than just helping someone hear better. But right. now we're talking fall detection mm -hmm. uh, and actual, you know, engagement and movement, you yes. know, from a perspective of getting people more social socially active, getting people more physically active to improve their overall health. Right. And so now you guys just today announced the Livio Edge AI and the custom product that is actually rechargeable. Yes. So how long did it take you guys to work yeah. to develop that stuff? Yeah, so I've heard comments like we're moving at Silicon Valley pace. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. In fact, uh, from the, from the, even before I joined, we had, through the deep discussions with Mr. Austin, the vision became already clear. The, what I shared today about our vision of using technology such as AI to improve the sound quality and experience of hearing, but then go beyond in what we call healthable, make the device while you're wearing it to be continuous monitor and tracker for your health, and make this a gateway to information and become your personal assistant. This vision was clarified right about even before I was joining. Uh -huh. And after that, it was the good old engineering. Right. Where we beefed up our teams, we created new expertise, hiring new talent, Brandon mentioned this morning about our establishment of an advanced R&D center in Tel Aviv, Israel. Right. Uh, that team is uh, a set of talent that had never been in uh, the hearing aid industry because we are planning to do things that have never right. been done in the hearing aid industry. Well, here's the problem for me. My right. job is to take this complex stuff and break it down to simple forms, but right. now you guys are starting to branch out into areas yeah. that aren't yeah. necessarily my area of expertise. Um, and I think it's great though. I mean, we're all eventually going to adapt to this being the new norm, I think, is not just focusing on the hearing side, but focusing on the total health of the individual in general. Um, one thing I want you to touch base a little bit more on is the actual custom product side of this with recharge and from what I understand, that custom product is going to have a lot of the AI benefits that we had with the Livio AI right, right. behind the ear device, right? Right. In fact, the most uh, common question that I was getting from customers for the last year after the introduction of Livio is when is this going to be custom? And uh, could that be rechargeable? That was yeah, the big question. Could it, could it connect to the phones and yeah. all that? And by the way, to that about uh, why should hearing aid do all of these things, this morning I gave the example of how phones Right? Uh -huh. We used to think phones are just phones. You just make phone calls. That's it. Right. Today, the phone is your GPS. The phone is your camera. The phone is your fitness tracker. The phone has become your a device, one device in your life you cannot live without. So I think it's such a uh, waste of real estate if your hearing aid is only amplifying sound. Right. It should do that as the primary job and right. do a very, very good job at that. It right. needs to. But if it is sitting there, why would it not measure your temperature? Why would it not track your physical activity? Why would it not? It's a sound processing device. Why did it not tell me how much social engagement have I had? You saw all of the detrimental right. uh, impact of loneliness and lack of social engagement to overall human health. Yep. There is no other device that I can think of which is always with you and is always classifying sound and with, with machine learning. So we can, it, it, it just, I think it's obvious, particularly talk about fault detection. Yeah. People are spending you know, the, collectively, people spend billions of dollars in medical emergency systems. I know, I just saw those numbers and it is billions of dollars per year just based off of uh, the medical care for individuals who have fallen. And then right. of course, people actually die from falling. Yes, and, and I'll tell you something else. So I, I teach at uh, Stanford, I'm an adjunct professor with Stanford School of Medicine. One of the preeminent experts on human motion is Dr. Scott Delp. And what you're saying is that there is no way that any other sensor in any other parts of the body would have the same exaggerated response than your head. And really? we have two of those sensors. So the reason we are getting better fault detection than your traditional fault right. detection sensors is because one, the head is pivoting around your uh, waist, right. exaggerated movement, and the head doesn't behave badly. It doesn't flail around, uh -huh. unlike your wrist right. or, or your neck on sensor. And we have two of them, so it's looking for, out for false positives and false negatives. Simply put, if I detect fall, if one of the AI systems in the hearing aid detects fall, it's asking the other one, hey, I think I fell, did you? So we can do this double check and reduce the false positives and false negatives. You know, one of the things that a lot of my, not my patients, but my patients 
children, you know, who go in with them to their appointments, they, they love the aspect of the hearing aids connecting directly with the phone for phone calls because, you know, I call mom and she never answers and it's really because she just, you know, can't either get to the phone in time or can't, you know, hear the phone. Um, and incorporating that technology with hearing aids to where you can call and, and directly have it go to the hearing devices itself is great, but this is kind of like another step up for those right. individuals who are concerned that their parents, you know, might fall mm -hmm. and then be able Able to actually go and, and either seek help for them or actually go check on them themselves. The peace of mind, right? I Absolutely. love my older relatives to have the device so it'll be, it'll be a peace of mind. Right? For the same reasons we have video monitors for watching home, right? It, so you don't have to worry all the right. time about mom falling down, hurting them herself, right? Or or sitting idle all day, right? Disconnected from social engagement, being lonely. And now you can even track that side of it without having to fall, right? Yes. So you can actually track that if you're the the child of someone who has hearing aids or the parent of someone who has hearing aids, you right. can actually track and see what their usage time is, right. what their engagement scores are, so this which morning, is fantastic. This morning we announced our Thrive Care application, absolutely, yeah, which talk allows about the that. caregiver now to benefit from that's te right. technology. That's right. That's right, and I. Think Think that that's I think that's a terrific route to go. You guys are definitely thinking about this in a way that not many other uh, companies are thinking about it. And so I think your job's pretty exciting here going forward. In fact, you know, I know you guys, so you guys just released this stuff. I already know that you're in your kitchen, like trying to concoct the next great thing when it right. comes to hearing technology. Um, but I can't imagine you're ready to share that because right. you just shared with us, a, a, you know, earth breaking, you know, earth shattering material this morning, which mm -hmm. I'm excited to get my hands on those devices. And actually check them out myself. And the only thing I'll tell you is, yes, you're totally right. I mean, the technology, I, I think that we're barely scratching the surface of what's possible. In terms of, you know, I have all these conversations with customers. This is an event where I get a lot of feedback. When I know what the complaints are, the engineer inside is concocting the solutions for it. I think the, I mentioned this morning about infusing AI in every aspect of the product, from the sound processing, to tracking health, to becoming your own very personal assistant, answering your questions, reminding of medication. We are just barely scratching the surface of how much we can do with a device that's in your ear. Right. And, and you, a very exciting future. And you said the ear is an even better spot than the wrist yes. uh, to have all this information. Yeah, I like to say so. ear is not the new wrist, right. but ear is better than wrist. Better than the wrist. That is where do you measure temperature of the body, not on the right. wrist. And we get much better biometrics data. Yeah. And we can deliver information. It's a personal communication device to manage your brain states. The fascinating stuff that right, we have. Right, absolutely. I think you might have one of the most interesting jobs in America, to be quite honest I'm with you. I'm extremely happy and privileged. That's awesome. To, particularly, the technology that we do, Today, I, I'm, I can proudly say this helps people live better lives. Absolutely. Which is why I, I left. I think that's why we all do it, because, and, and you can see it. And, and you can see it. And, it, and providers are the ones who are kind of on the front lines of seeing that, but um, it doesn't take a lot for you guys to kind of catch wind of all of the amazing stuff that's happening uh, with these individuals who, who have hearing loss, or, and eventually, who I truly believe this, who don't have hearing loss and are gonna want to use this technology in the future. So I mean, that, that's, that's the biggest opportunity for this industry collectively. Yeah. Removing the stigma from the hearing aids and all of these designs that uh, we have now with really cool looking devices. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the stigma is going away already. I mean, no one reaches out to me saying like, oh, you know, I really want to wear hearing devices, but they're just not cool or they, they make me feel like people just aren't thinking that right. way anymore. And I think that it's, it's companies like Starkey who are developing these products that allow you to do more things with them uh, that's really fighting through that. So I, I really appreciate that side of it from you guys. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank well, you. thanks for taking time with me today. I'm sure this won't be the last time that we ever chat. Guys, if you want to check out more information, or you want to see more interviews, just make sure you go to drcliffaud.com. Hi guys, I hope you liked the interview. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.